This is where Natalia buried her husband. War crimes investigators are taking his body from the soft earth, looking for evidence so his killers can be held to account, so his soul can rest in peace. Natalia wants us to know he was buried with love and with the kindness of strangers. We buried them just by ourselves, she says. There were some guys, I don't know them, that saw the Russians were no longer on this road and they helped me to take his body and run with it to the cemetery to bury him because it was still so dangerous. That was on the 20th of March. The town of Ivanki, one of the first that Russian troops came upon on the highway heading south to Kiev from Belarus, had at that point been under Russian occupation for more than three weeks. Her story, more on that in a moment, is one of many circulating in Ivan Kiev, of compassion shown by strangers, of small acts of heroism, of pluck and resourcefulness, while a community under occupation fended for itself. <laughs> Teriana Suiridenko, the mayor of a community that includes 81 surrounding villages, <laughs> says pharmacies, bakeries, and hospitals braved the occupation to continue providing the essentials. And there's also her own story. As the local leader, did the Russians come looking for you? I got information from one of our civilians to leave the house because the Russians were looking for me. I'm also very grateful to the people who hit us. Can you tell me about some of the terrible things that happened here? It was a lot of horrible things, she says. Torture of former soldiers, terror against civilians, everything. But I don't want to tell you about it. I want as soon as possible to forget that. And I also want people to come back to their normal lives. Ivan Kiev is still recovering after a month of Russian occupation. We've been told stay on the pavement, don't go in people's yards, don't walk on the grass because they haven't demined this entire area. In fact, the mayor tells us that the Russians left behind more mines than there were people in this entire community. She says that despite all that's happened here, People still love Ivan Kiev. Before the war, one of the things people here took the most pride in was their town being home to some of the most noted works of one of Ukraine's most famous painters, folk artist Maria Primachenko. She died in 1987. She grew up as a peasant in one of this community's villages. This is video the mayor recorded on February 28th, the day Russian shelling hit the museum and burned it to the ground. Let's remember it for our whole life, she says. We built it, collecting money, and with so much effort. But the Russians destroyed it. Glory to Ukraine. We will win. It's our land. We will restore everything. And that may just be possible. At the time, the art world thought all the paintings were destroyed. But the town's cultural director tells Newsy that on that day, just after the Russian shell landed on the museum, the security guard who lived nearby ran over and entering through a window rescued one by one the Primachenko paintings. So where did they take the paintings? The paintings are in a safe place, the mayor says. Not here. Okay. For their protection, she won't say where. We still don't feel that the war is over, Swirodenko says, because we're so close to the Belarusian border. Belarus, around 35 miles away, is where the Russian tanks came from, on the road from Chernobyl. Natalia's husband of more than 30 years, who worked at the Chernobyl site the day after the Russian invasion, decided to drive from the home where they were sheltering to check on their own home nearby. He became one of so many civilians killed in his car. The charred evidence of such attacks stacked in piles around the Kiev area. Natalia says she went past a burned out car several times, not realizing it was her husband's. She later found out and took him to be buried. At the exhumation, she somehow found the courage to look at what remained of his corpse once again. Ivan Kiev police say he's one of 34 people killed in this community two of them children. After the war crimes prosecutors document her husband's death, he'll be reburied at a different cemetery. Dignity provided first by strangers, then by truth seekers. In a town where people and paintings in the worst of times received love. Many in the art world still don't realize that these important paintings in Ivankiv were saved. It's one of the rare examples in this war 
when things aren't as bad as they appear.